This episode of Linux Action Show is brought to you by GoDaddy.com. And by Ting.com. Head over to last.ting.com and save $25 off your first device. Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Linux Action Show Season 28, Episode 8. My name is Chris. My name is Matt. Good morning to you, Matt. Good morning. Are you ready for me to lay down the big show? Oh, yeah. All right, so coming up on this week's episode of the Linux Action Show, we'll help you take great notes under Linux. Turns out there's a lot of ways to accomplish this, and they have some features, and others lack other features, and sometimes there's some great features. But we're going to dig through all of it, and plus we'll have some honorable mentions. So hopefully yep. by the time we're all done... You'll be more organized thanks to Linux. Absolutely. Plus, there's been some great new games that have just hit for Linux, including the Humble Bundle. We'll show you a couple of our favorites just to maybe entice you a little Ooh. bit to go out there and spend some of that hard-earned cash. Mm -hmm. And, of course, we've got some great picks this week and some feedback coming up on this Friday the 13th edition of the Linux Action Ooh, Show. That's right. It is Friday the 13th. <laughs> Yeah, we're doing this on a Friday of special Should occasion. Should we have made our background Friday the 13th with, like, Jason and all that? I'm just saying. You never know. Keep never an know. eye on there, Matt. He might, uh, yeah. <laughs> Lurking in the woods, you know. <laughs> Good thing it's not a lake behind us. Anyway. All right, well, why don't I start with our picks uh, this week. Uh, we're we're going to start with, guess what? Shocker for you. Actually, by the end of this pick segment, one of these categories will not remain. Ooh. One of these Whoa. categories of picks will die at the end wow. of this pick segment. So stay wow, tuned. But huge. first, it's our Runs Linux. And this week, Piper. Piper. It's a smart, elegant security and home automation system hmm. that runs Linux. And this is on Indiegogo. It's got 156,000 of their 100,000 goals, still with eight days remaining. And it was a fixed funding campaign, so they're set. And I thought I'd highlight this because I know you've been kind of looking at this. I have, yes. Mm -hmm. And I had uh, somebody break into my garage this morning, or something. Something. Yeah, so those I gremlins thought, or something. I thought, I could use one of these in the studios. But, of course, mm -hmm. Matt, it does run Linux. Check it out. I've got a little bit of the specs right here. And guess what? It's got an ARM chip in there, too. Oh, that's kind of cool. It's got an ARM processor running Linux, a wide-angle camera, motion detector, speaker, microphone, temperature, and humidity sensors, ambient light sensor, siren, Wi-Fi, and a Z-Wave controller. We've been developing Piper for more than a year. It's been a long, rewarding journey. We've learned a ton, and we have a product that we're proud of, and we can't wait to start using in our own homes. We started working on Piper because we thought a lot about what is wrong with current security systems. So you got a humidity system, you got a motion detection system, you've got uh, temperature, and it, it stats all this out for you. Okay, that's cool. The humidity system is just like now that's that's going serious. And uh, it uh, it uh, has the ability to yeah. sort of um, like uh, page your uh, smartphone, so that way if it detects motion, it'll start sending a video feed to your to the app on the smartphone. You know, if it has a humidity system. I, you know, I almost wonder, is this funding in Washington? Because I could see that being real popular with certain folks. Here. Uh, yeah. I, I'm just saying. Yeah. I, you know, it's like, I'm wondering. I don't <laughs> oh, know. I get, oh, yeah. oh, I see. What I'm not kidding. Actually, I'm, you know what? Seriously, this would be really great <laughs> in a grow house. You're right. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> uh, wow. So it also has built-in Z-Wave uh, yeah. controls, so that way you can send. So if you have Z-Wave appliances That's or like really the, cool. uh, like there's some air conditioners that have mm -hmm. Z-Wave. If you've got the light controls that have Z-Wave, you know those little modules you can yeah. get turn stuff on. Uh, you, can, you can send a Z-Wave command from your smartphone to this Piper thing, and it will then control the devices in your house. And so it can, then you can also set up things like, oh, okay, if it detects motion, yeah. have it turn on the lights. Now, oh, that's cool. all of this stuff by itself is not necessarily new, but it's, I mm -hmm. think the interesting thing is bringing it all together, putting it inside a package as a camera built in, powered yeah. by Linux, and, nice and connected tight to the Nice, tight little web. package, you yeah. know. And we're going to see it at least get made uh, since they've reached their funding goal. Wow. And I don't know, so here's what's interesting, is you get a kind of a sense of what the price is mm -hmm, going to be here, mm -hmm. because... Just to jump in, for the uh, early adopter, it's $209. Oh, okay. If it goes to market, kind of even it around might bring that? it down. Yeah, maybe yeah. bring it down a little bit. Here's one with cellular built in. Seven fi That's uh, not too bad. Yeah, 250 for cellular is not really bad at all. So really, if they could, if they could get it around this... Now, here's what I want to see is... And I, they don't, I didn't really catch this hmm. in the in their demo video, but okay, so you've got something here that's got a speaker, it's got a microphone, so you can actually say, hey, knock it off, you dang oh, yeah. kids, you know, stuff yeah. like that. Uh, it's got an accelerometer. I guess you can see if it, you can detect if it's being picked up. Uh, but this one, they say three pipers can set up anywhere in your house to get a complete coverage. I wonder if I don't really understand if they work well together. But yeah, they don't really elaborate on. That. But if you had that, that'd be really cool. They've got Android and iOS apps. That's good, supposedly. 
I only see screenshots of the iOS, but in the video they said they have Android too. And there it is on a Samsung. Not bad. You can see it's got a wide-angle lens camera. Which then, I like. And when you've got multiple in the house, you see how the smartphone app splits it into multiple mm -hmm. cameras. I like that. See, this has got to be right up your alley because you've been looking yes. into this kind of stuff. Very much so. Yeah. That's very cool. So that's Piper. And uh, mm. it might be coming to a store near you since it's reached its funding goal Good stuff. sometime in the future. All right, Matt, I have got a fantastic, well, I think so. We're going to say Saranara to a category this week, oh. and we're going to do it with a bang. Okay. A real bang, Matt. But first, I want to thank our first sponsor this week, GoDaddy.com. Go now, GoDaddy.com has got a fantastic deal. If you use the code SHOW199, you know, Linux mm. Action SHOW199. Show. That's going to get you .com for $1.99. And when you go there, the handsome and powerful Jean-Claude Van Damme will meet you with his foot in the air, ready to kick you in the face if you make a bad decision. <laughs> like not using show $1.99 when you check out. Or if you just click that link in our show notes, it will automatically tag your shopping session now. Hmm. GoDaddy is the number one domain name registrar in the world, and they are kicking it up a notch. If you are in a small business or if you work with groups or, or if you have an open source project where you have several people that might be responsible for something... I can highly recommend GoDaddy.com for the group management capabilities oh, yeah. of it, for the ease of handing off, for delegating rights, all that kind of stuff. We just set up a brand new JupyterColony.com page. Good deal. In fact, why don't I show it yeah, to you right let's now? Yeah, check that out. So one of the cool things about this is uh, we've been having, we have teams of people that kind of work on stuff. Uh, Rikai made this cool Jupyter Colony page for us, and uh, I needed to update the DNS. But oh, sure. I'm, I'm, I am a bit of a busy man these days, and so I actually just couldn't get to it. So uh, we were able to just send Alan a PM. Of course, I'm having a hard time typing right now. That's okay. We sent Alan a PM and said, hey, Alan, could you update the DNS for us automatically? And since we've delegated control of JupyterCalling.com's domain name in GoDaddy to Alan's scale engine account. Oh, that's cool. So GoDaddy allows you to do that. That's he really just neat. logs in, goes into his nice. admin control panel, clicks on his Jupyter Broadcasting folder, expands that out, and sees all the domains of ours that he's, he has access to. And he nice. was able to repoint to this brand new refreshed Jupiter Colony page, and look what Super. we have here. It gives out links to like all of the so show subreddits, the different gaming community oh, links, great. the social media and chat places where you can find our YouTube page, our calendar feed, everything. Right is, we've put everything in just one spot for people trying the different hosts, uh, social media profiles. Everything they want. Yeah. yeah. And uh, this is obviously something we've needed to do to give right. people information. And I, me not being available to just log in and update it was not a good enough reason to hold that back. True. Just because we are, we're, we're in a group where you know, we ha we're able to have that delegation, mm -hmm. It's super easy to have Alan take over and do that for me, and it made, it made the process get done without being held up by me. And this That's is one great. of the really nice f features of GoDaddy, since they are the number one domain name registrar. And they embrace that delegation on your behalf. Yeah, they make it work really good. good so stuff. use the code SHOW199 when you're over at GoDaddy.com. And thanks to GoDaddy for sponsoring. Woo. The Linux Action Show. Good stuff. Thank you, GoDaddy. All right, Matt, let's start with the Android pick this right. week. Yes. Oh, by the way, I did mean to... I did mean to. Oh, uh, yeah. Whoop, whoop. This is what happens when you forget to enter your uh, savings code. Yeah, you Van see that? Van gets very angry. Van Dam is in he there. He comes at you with server racks. Those dot coms, he gets them at a price, people, for you, and he passes that savings on to you, so don't make him angry. No. All right. All right. Uh, so, yeah, what were we? Oh, yeah. Uh, Android pick. So, this week, mm -hmm. we had an experiment that went wrong on mm -hmm. uh, Linux Unplugged. Uh, we tried doing a little, you know, the show yeah. Linux Unplugged is, a, is no format. That's true. You have you should really have no expectations other than there's going to be some Linux talk. and we'll probably show up. Yeah, that too. Uh, and we did have some Linux talk, but we spent the second half of the show talking about Star Trek. That's right. Well, some people loved it. Some mm -hmm. people hated. Some it. people didn't like it. And so we're going to jettison that segment like a breached warp core. Okay. But I thought to say Saranara to that segment on Unplugged, we'd celebrate this week. By saying goodbye to the Android app pick every week. Wow. Okay. By doing a blowout of Star, my favorite Star Trek app. Nice. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So I'll tell you what we're going to replace it with at the end of the picks. But uh, we say goodbye. Our first and last Android app picks, the Star Trek Communicator. Now, wow. this one, you really got to be a geek. You got to be pretty geeky. This and I know, is true. I, have you tried it, Matt? Have you tried this one? I have not tried it okay. yet, but I was really impressed with what I was reading about. So you see me, I got a Star Trek folder right here on Oh, so you're yeah. obviously <laughs> already set. Yeah. Okay. And I, this is one I did not buy, because all this is, is it gives you a communicator and a dialer. But if you really like that old classic, when you open up your communicator. It would be cooler if you had, like, a smartphone flip phone, because then you could really get the effect. Totally. In, right? The rumor you is know? Star Trek, or uh, Samsung's working on that. That would, be, that would be cool. Now, here's one I do, I do have on my phone, and I love it quite a bit. Star Trek, the text game. It is an oh, old nice. mud-like Star Trek game, and it's got um, 
Great sound effects. Let's see what, I don't know if I have it yeah. in this folder. So I actually have... Surprisingly, it's not in the Star Trek folder. I have okay. so many Star Trek apps that I was like, ah, I don't need to put that one in the Star Trek folder. <laughs> <laughs> so I've got like this one's like not in there either. I got a I got, well, you know, page even. I got to tell you something. People, listen. Don't go downloading willy-nilly Star Trek apps, even when they are pay apps. Because I have never gotten more junk on my Android phone <laughs> than when I have been searching for Star Trek apps. Oh, I imagine. And, uh, and Bumbled e with what? Even the pay ones. Yeah. Oh, really? Oh, even the pay oh. ones. And we're talking like constant notification spam, oh, creating icons on my desktop. Oh, like I hate that. One or two a day. Yeah, yeah it's junk. Uh, best advice I have there, folks, if you're thinking about doing it, you know, never hurts to app brain it first. Yeah, mm -hmm. so I've got, uh, yeah, App Rain's good. Yeah. I've got, so these ones are all ones that I've vetted. So Star Trek, the text yeah. game, is an old mud Star Trek game, and it's, That's awesome. it's great. It's it. low battery, too, which yeah, is really right. cool. Now, oh, I see where you're going with those. Scientific Sci Fi Scanner is mm. a tricorder app, but they couldn't call it that because of copyright sure. issues. But uh, I have. You an, get the general gist, though. Yeah. I have an older one here. <laughs> Dude, that's awesome. It's still called Tricorder. <laughs> in fact, here, I'll plug it into this so you guys can hear. For you uh, Star Trek fans. You can hear the, uh, it's got Star awesome. Trek sound effects there. You That's really cool. Yeah, so it's like, let me scan that for you. Hmm. So am I coming in humanoid? Or Indications are negative at this time, Matt. You appear to be, hmm, according to this, you are a Romulan spy. Most illogical. <laughs> All right, so uh, it's got a tricorder in there, which is cool, That's and it cool. looks good. Um, oh, sounds cool, too. Stop, stop, how do you quit? There we go. Bye. Uh, so yeah, that's a fun one, and I can't remember if that was free or not. Uh, that's really cool. Uh, yeah, but so we got three apps. The cool thing about this one is uh, it actually ties in and plays with your GPS a little bit. And, oh, dude, and stuff that like would that. be cool. And 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 another pro tip I'm going to give you: if you're ever in your car and you're pulled over by the police, <laughs> don't bust out your tricorder and take a scan to make sure he's legitimately a cop. Oh, that'd when, be when a bad idea. When he's giving idea. you the felony stop on the ground thing, that's usually pretty good. He hated it when I did that. Yeah. And then last but not least, this one's fun for uh, the tablet because it has tablet resolution. Oh, it's that's just called nice. it's just called L cars, and uh, it 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 just gives you fake Elkar's animations from that the show. so cool. Yeah, it's oh totally it's totally irrelevant, but like uh, here's like uh, you can see oh, that one. Man. Here I'll show it. It has a good animation, so it's it's if you if you remember some of these Elkar yeah. screens they had in the show. And they got different ones and when you interact with it it makes That's Elkar's great. noises and yeah, and you can go back here and I well, can the say the animations are spot on too. Uh, so there's it's called, this one's called 12 Elkar's and uh, yeah. So I, and I love the screen capture you have on the for the app itself on the you right there. It looks like a uh, uh, blood cells. Yeah, they have like all so the old medical some, some ones, medical and, ones and yeah. some scientific ones. Yeah, they got they got a bunch That's of and like great. stellar cartography and like computer memory core and wormhole analysis and <laughs> galaxy mapping and nice. Yeah, yeah. So, I like it. <clears throat> so there you go. So now uh, I we we conclude the Android app pick because when I originally started, I I was doing some soul searching on this sure. recently. Um. Because I'm, you know, I, I, I originally started doing the Android app pick back when Android was a brand new platform. And it needed that boost. And so. it was considered that iOS had, you know, dramatically superior I I applications. I that, yeah. Yeah, and I thought, you know, I'm going to make this segment in this show to show people that this Linux-based smart platform mm -hmm. has great apps too. Yeah. And it was sort of me trying to evangelize the fact that there are fantastic applications being created for the other platform. That's obviously not needed anymore. No. I and mean, it's, uh, if anything, I think they've either caught up or surpassed in some ways. And I don't necessarily know if I want to be um, in the position of promoting Android. I, right. I mean, I use Android. I have several Android devices. Sure. Um, I will continue to use Android. But, you know. Things have changed. Yeah. You know, the position of Android in the marketplace has changed. There's new contenders coming about that are also yeah. equally exciting that we might want to leave doors right. open and let them compete as well. Right. Sure. So I think what I'll probably do most often is, uh, I haven't quite dialed in yet, but I think I'm just going to do a spotlight. And okay. In this in this spot, it could be an Android app one week. So please continue to you know if you've got a yeah. great app you find out there, I'd love to see it. It could be an extra desktop app. It could be like a, a good resource online for Linux users. Mm -hmm. uh, could be a distribution again. Yeah. You know, because okay. we used to have a distro pick, um, and I just kind of wanted to. And so instead of so there'll be a pick in that spot, but it's going right. to just be something that's great related to Linux. It's not necessarily going to have to be an Android app. And um, I will still continue to spotlight, like, if we're doing a segment on note-taking or we're doing a segment... Then maybe we would bring in the Android. 
So. Yeah, yeah, exactly. sure. Then we'll still have it. Well, here's the here's the way to interface with this with Absolutely. Android. So it's not that we're shunning Android. It's just that we're not going to make it a spotlight feature yeah. anymore in the pick segment. We'll just spotlight a bunch of other. It's already stuff. a kid at the head of the class. We don't need to promote it. Now, if I uh, blow your mind next week because some great Android app comes out and I spotlight it, well, sorry. <laughs> we'll be eating crow in the back room here. Yeah. It's captain's prerogative. That's right. Number one. All right, Matt. Cool. Well, let me move on to our desktop pick. Now uh, we are saying goodbye to the Star Trek segment on Unplugged. Yes. And since people who hated it really, really, really hated it, just a little, I just thought little. Uh, we'd uh, they'd probably love then if we spent a little time talking about Star Trek in this show. Absolutely, because clearly more of it is mm -hmm. the solution. It's one. That's a great way to say sayonara. So this week we travel back in time to uh, the best moments in Chris's childhood or later childhood. Mm -hmm. Childhood, Star Trek: Voyager Elite Force was a oh, fantastic yeah. first-person shooter based on the Quake 3 engine, and one of the greatest Star Trek combat games ever included a fantastic uh, storyline and a fantastic mm -hmm. multiplayer, at least in my To kind of put that in perspective, I was never really huge into gaming, and I played the hell out of it back, back in the day. So. Yeah, I, I really enjoyed this game, and I played it with friends like uh, you would not believe so. Um, we actually might have made mention of it on the show a long time ago. A project was started. Um, a lot of these old Quake 3 games have had this treatment. Uh, it's called uh, IO. IOST Voy, mm -hmm. and it is a uh, port of the Quake 3 engine for this game to open source. Nice. And it hasn't seen a lot of activity, but it doesn't really need a lot of activity. No, it really doesn't. It stands on its own. Yeah, and it's not like the game's in active development, so it's not like you have to keep updating it. Mm -hmm. uh, it does require that you have the pack files. You know, yeah. those old yeah. Quake oh, 3 yeah, pack absolutely. files. That's where it gets the textures from. But I swear, this game but looks... That's not, that's not bad. This game looks better than it did back then. I know. Well, it's fun. It was just fun to play. Yep. All right. So here, I'm going to plug it in so that way we can hear it. So you guys can, and I'll play a little, I'll give you a little uh, demo of it here. I, uh, I've decided not to put it in, whoa, hi there. Hello. I've decided not to put it, oops, I've decided not to put it in full screen so that way I don't um, right. screw with our capture. So sure. it is running in windowed mode. I apologize for that, but, you know, deal, people. All right. So here it is. And I'll just do, uh, we'll just do a quick little game and just so you kind of get an idea of it. You have uh, several different levels here. These are all like here's a board cube you can go fight yep. in, right? Here's like a Klingon ship or something. I can't remember. Here's an old uh, town. It's like an oh, away that's mission. Great. And uh, so here's one. A lot of different options here. Here's a great one. So let's go with uh, Dangerous Cargo. Yeah. Tuvok is a hell of an opponent. He's, he, so, okay. And then because Tuvok's a hell of an opponent, I'm going to go Ensign. So once you, you can get this game, you can get this for free. You get the executable. Mm -hmm. You just have to have the pack file. <laughs> which you can pick up for real cheap. All right, so here we go, Matt. So I'm in, I'm in the Voyager cargo bay right now. First strike. Oh, I got first strike, oh, my Matt. Goodness. So now, uh, so now I'm, uh, I'm somebody that we have to contend with. I'm a contender. Now. So you got your different weapons, all Star Trek themed, right? And uh, and it looked like I was looking at the, uh, the image of Lana there, and it looked like the uh, maybe a transporter accident with Lana and Harry Kim. <laughs> yeah, kind of got got yeah. a little mixed up. The there. models are a little old, but <laughs> I, it actually holds up better than my recollection. Yeah. I seem to remember. Oh yeah, it. no, they were in my recollection of it was much better. But I just so I almost wonder if they've done some improvements with I this think engine. So Tuvok yeah. looks better than he used to. Yeah, exactly. Could be the Bonobo, but I think it's Tuvok. Anyways, so there's lots of great, great missions. The single player is absolutely fantastic. If you can, if you have the old pack files, if you can pick up the CD like in a used bin for mm -hmm. like six bucks, right? You know, totally. Uh, eBay, eBay, Same. whatever. Yeah. It is a great game and it's fun multi mm -hmm. multiplayer, and it runs great under Linux because. Awesome. It is built for Linux. That is, that is the port, and it is available in the Arch user repository. Oh, so I'd imagine awesome. there's probably uh, other That'd several ways to play that, that there. Boy. Yeah. So uh, that is uh, Star Trek Elite Voyager with the open source Quake 3 engine, and uh, it is a great fun. If you if you are around my age and you played that game back in the day, or you're gonna want to play this again. If you haven't. Yeah, that was a good You're one. You're missing out. you got to check this out. Yeah. All right. Well, before we run, I just want to give a plug to our awesome subreddit over at linuxactionshow.reddit.com. Go over there and get involved with the show. You can submit uh, topics. You can ask questions. Mm -hmm. You can engage with the community. Like, uh, I love this submission here that Pierre put in here. Uh, Fox News attempts to explain what GitHub is. Nice. And he includes a screenshot of them explaining what... Oh, and this is from... <laughs> so, you know, this oh, wow. is... Like, the community can put stuff wow. in here that is is also just great for the community. And we use this as a resource to gauge what you guys like to see in this show. Uh, I grab a lot of stuff from Unplugged. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, uh, like one of our stories this week, I, I hold on to, 
and I wait to see if anybody in the subreddit notices. And then, like, like, like last night, I'm putting the show doc together, right, and I right, saw right. it show up in the subreddit. I was like, oh, I almost made it! <laughs> Good so job, guys. Close. Good they, job. They got it. So it's, it's, sometimes they're in competition with me, and they don't even know it. But that's okay. That's good. It's becoming a great source for Linux news. So linuxactionshow.reddit.com. You don't have to have a Reddit account if you just want to peruse the headlines. All right, Matt, let's do the news. Hey, it's the news, and this episode is brought to you by... Ting.com. Matt Ting is mobile that makes sense. No BS mobile service provider. The mobile service provider of myself and Mr. Matt here. Mm -hmm. And uh, I have to tell you, one of the things that really drew me to Ting initially... I love this about them. No contracts and no early termination fees. I'm a free-loving kind of guy, Matt. I like to keep my options available, and I like to be in control of the situation, All right. if you know what I mean. I well, know what you mean. Well, Ting knows that, too, and I, I cannot believe... As a Ting customer, I feel like every month it gets better and better. Since I've started talking about Ting at the beginning of 2013, every month I am more excited that they are yeah. my mobile service provider and now, I know you guys have heard me talk about them for a while, and you've been maybe considering it, but you've been stuck in that contract, which, once you switch to Ting, won't be a problem anymore. Well, good news, my friends. Ting is rolling out something that is incredible. They're helping you get out of those contracts. They help you soften the blow of that sting by helping up to 25% of your early termination fee. Whoa. It could be like up to $75 per device as you're having to, uh, yeah. That's know. huge. So if, you're, if you need to get wow. out of a contract, and by the way, when you go to last.ting.com, not only will we auto-charge your session with a $25 savings off your first month of service or off your first device if you bring Slash your Slash it right off there. But if you go through their calculator savings and you see by putting your bill in there how much you're going to save, because the way Ting does billing is unique. When you combine the savings from Ting... With that early termination relief efforts they're doing here, by giving you up to $75 off of that early termination fee, and check, all you got to do is you grab a device, you port your number over to it, and then you submit the early termination fee claim to Ting, and they'll credit it to you. Just Ooh. that simple. Super easy. And what's really great about Ting is once you're in, you're going to love it because they break your rates up by minutes, text messages, and megabytes, and they just bill you at the end of the month for whatever bucket you fill into. And like if you're like me and you're pretty savvy, you know how to avoid using voice minutes, right now I showed it to you last week, mm -hmm. still $12 for my bill. And the fact that not only do they make that an option, but they will even sh provide you an article that helps you to do it yourself. Oh, yeah. And That's fact, awesome. I haven't How many phone companies do that? I haven't, showed, I haven't really showed this to you, and I can't yeah. really show it very well on the uh, screen, sure. but I'll do my best. Kind of so verbally talk them through. Ting includes a uh, mobile app that you can, so you can monitor mm -hmm. your Ting account right through. So you don't even have to go to the website if you don't want to. And one of the things that the Ting service has in here is alerts. So if you go right in here to alerts, you can just say, hey, I would like to know when Matt's phone or when my mom's phone or when mm -hmm. Andrew, you know, what, whoever's on your account. Uh, Matt's on his own account. My mom's sure. on her own account. But if they were on my account, I could say, let me know when they get to about 400 megabytes of data usage. Yeah. I just like to know about that. You can do all kinds of different types of alerts. When you go in here, you can have it send you an email, a text message, or just a push notification to the app itself. How great is that, right? Super nice. I mean, I had a, a, a someone in my family recently on another provider that recently discovered that the mobile company has absolutely no interest in telling <laughs> you when you're over. Yeah. And three or $400 later, he learned that lesson. Yeah, so. yeah that is... That is that is, of course not. They're Stuff in, like that matters. This app is great. Yeah, so go over to uh, last.ting.com. Don't forget that there's no mysterious line items on your bill. Ping, Ting's only going to charge you for what you use and then whatever taxes they legally have to cover, plus unlimited devices on one plan that all share a, a pool. So if you've got a small business or a family, this is a great way to go. Plus, their fantastic online control panel is only matched by their excellent customer service if you call them at 1-855-TING-FTW anytime between 8 a.m. or 8 p.m. A real person answers the phone. And you know what's hmm. funny is people don't actually believe it. But we get reviews constantly yeah, people, from people. People actually will put it on the subreddit yeah. and be like, oh, my God, they, <laughs> they really, really do. Yeah. There's, like, regular folks that actually know what yeah. they're talking they're about. They're geeks. And, and, yeah. They're geeks that love cell phones, and that's why they're yeah. in the Ting tech support. And that's what makes them really good at their job is mm -hmm. they, Ting hires the folks that would normally be doing that tech support for their friends and family right. anyways. They're like, oh, you have a passion and interest in this? Come work in our call center. Totally. And if you call them between 8 a.m. or 8 p.m. Eastern, boom, somebody just answers the phone. Well, I love, I love that they get that. It's like, hey, look, you guys are doing this already. Why not come work for us? Yeah. That's, yeah, it's awesome. Ting, Ting, the, the company behind Ting is Two Cows, and Two Cows is always really know they what they're really doing. And nope. I love that they're shaking all this up, and it's really it's a great experience. So go to last.ting.com, take twenty five dollars off your first device, and thanks to Ting for sponsoring yeah. the Linux Action Show. Good stuff. Oh, and now if we yeah. could just get them to do ISP, like full on ISP, that I know. would be oh Ting Fiber, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so there. I know that'd oh. be awesome. All okay. right. I want to start with something that I'm excited to actually make a news item again, yeah. and that is the Humble Indie Bundle 9. Woo! You know, it's, the Humble Bundle's been a, kind of 
I've been distancing the show from it a little bit because it hasn't been really grabbing me. But this week, I personally am very excited to see Fez hit the bundle. Oh, no kidding. You know, trying to, honestly, in terms of quality of game, the entire bundle. Because the one that, you know, everybody yeah, knows like the thing the, about. They really hum- stepped it up. You know, everything, everybody knows about Humble Bundles. You mm-hmm. pay for what you want, right? And then, you know. And it so- was a big push that we, a lot of people believe that helped push Steam into yeah. actually supporting Linux, was that? And so trying to is worth the cost of the bundle mm-hmm. right there. Um, Absolutely. Fez is one of these games that I have, I have coveted thy neighbor's game for a while. Uh, I saw Fez at PAX two years ago. Um, here, I'll play a little bit of it. Yeah, let's check this out. So, you know, in fact, maybe instead of play it, I'll just show it to you. Because I actually, yeah. so one of the cool things about um, the Humble Bundle games is they let you uh, claim the key in Steam. So oh. you can then manage it via Steam if you want, or you can download the tar I file. like that they get that. That's good. It's nice for me because, you know, yeah. I always like to have the uh, option of reloading. Mm-hmm. Totally. So Fez is, it, it at first, looks like a clunky 8-bit game. Right. Uh, then, after you watch it and play it for a little bit, you realize it is incredibly clever, mm-hmm. amazingly deep, and uh, extremely fun to play. So it's got some retro aspects to it, but it's got some of the newer... Uh, all right, so let me show this to you. Okay. So this is Fez starting up right here. I like the intro. It's pretty cool. I know. You should hear it in the headphones. It's got like, I don't have them plugged in for you, but sure, sure. But it's got like all this crazy space sounds to it. Um, so one of the neat things about Fez after you play for cool. a few That's minutes. not bad looking, actually. Is you unlock. All right, so check this out. So here I am. It's an 8-bit platformer. Right. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm playing with uh, my USB controller, a little uh, Logitech dual action here. I mean, it's 8-bit, but it's it, the, the color choices and the shading, it's not bad. It's very good. Yeah, now, but watch nice this. Job. They add a cool three-dimensional element to this game. Whoa, really? Ready for this? Yeah. Check this out. When I... Whoa! Whoa! So you're actually... It's actually a four-level... Oh, dude! Yeah, so... It's <laughs> crazy town. Yeah. So you have a little... This is a little oh, cube man. guide, and this cube is broken up all over this town, and I have to put it back together to save it, and... Uh, to, to get to the top of this tower, you utilize the three-dimensional aspect. Oh, man. See, it's neat? like it starts out all, okay, it's like, okay, you know, it's kind of a 2D two, two, two yeah. game. Oh, wait a minute. Hello. Very clever, very cute. So you can go in rooms and stuff, and oh, you can change dude. it in the room itself. Could you imagine if, like, Mario back in the day had this kind of function? I know. I know, right? This is crazy. And it's, uh, there's lots of little funny things in here. See, now, now I can't see the door because mm-hmm. I have my angle, so I have to change the view until I... So now it's not only a nicety, it's a necessity. It's okay. part of the puzzle. Right. It's part of the puzzling, yeah. Right. You, oh, yeah, it's absolutely a necessity. You, yeah. you can't get... Oops. You can't get through the game without it. Um, it's pretty forgiving, too, as you can see there. So anyways, this a game is something new that I've been waiting to play with my son. And Yeah, this I, would be fun for I, kids and the whole family. There, you see, the, you can tell... The, the, the 8 bit graphics are deceitful because there's actually a very powerful graphics engine behind this that actually delivers some very neat uh, uh, and unique gameplay. And I think you really, it, it comes home when you begin to change the views, then it's all of a sudden it's like, oh, oh yeah, there's some serious graphics here. Yeah, so know? that's Fez. And, that's cool. Um, it, if you are curious about it, I mean, if you grab the bundle, download it, and play the first 15 minutes of it, and if, I, I don't know if I should, I feel like if I told you why, you would go play it right now. But I don't want to tell you why, because maybe, I don't want to take that from Maybe you. just say there's there's something that's so worth it that you're going to be thanking you later. Computer nerds will very much appreciate uh, the first few minutes of this Sounds game. like a dare. Uh, the other one that is really awesome looking in here, and I'll just play oh. a, a little video of this, is uh, it's called uh, Mark of the Ninja. Yeah. And I'll jump ahead a little bit so you can kind of get an idea of what it's like. Another side-scroller. But very whoa, that's yeah. Cool. Oh whoa, Hello. very artsy, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't think of what the. Uh, there's another game that that style that you want to. That is why this is better because it. Oh, see, it blends the theatrics. Oh, yeah. this is really cool. So uh, nice. Mark of the Ninja. So that's both cool. Fez and Mark of the Ninja making their debut mm-hmm. on uh, the Linux uh, GNU slash Linux. So which is check cool. that out. And then faster than light, we've talked about before on the yeah. show. It's a great way to get frustrated. Um, <laughs> I need more of those, right? Yeah, but, and then yeah, on top yeah. of on top of the humble indie bundle nine, mm-hmm. we've also got the humble mm-hmm. weekly sale. Whoa! Now the weekly sale has been going on. Sometimes they don't have great Linux mm-hmm. games. Mm-hmm. This week, friends, six days left as of this episode. I would argue that perhaps the humble indie weekly sale, or not indie, Whoa. the humble weekly sale is worth it, just for Mr. Duke Nukem 3D nice. Megaton edition, and uh, just for the kids at home that might remember. I'm going to just start it up so you guys can see it. Yeah. And see when you you, know, you got multiple versions you can play. Uh, I, I loved this game as a kid. Oh, too. yeah. No, two characters. Awesome. That's rock. 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 That's rock.
my ride. All right, I'll just play for a second, just to, just so we can all be nostalgic, and then I'll give up. Gotta look at these graphics. How oh old is this? Oh my god, look? that's awesome. <laughs> All right, so I won't torture the audio listeners, uh, but it, this old game it brings back like childhood, uh, you know, uh, memories of course. Oh yeah. Of killing aliens in the streets of L.A. This is very much for the audio listeners. A very er, you know like early years PC game. It's a good. It's a good time. It's, it's almost fast like, paced. You know what's yeah. cool? Actually, I think what it is about this Matt is it's sort of like with this particular type of history, you get to relive it on demand. And right. so, you know, this was PC. I mean, this game was so clever and so irreverent. And oh, it, people lost days in this game. I mean, they and really did. To be able now to go back and play this, some of you know, it's almost like unlocking this historical archive right here on Linux. And I just and really you discover don't. aspects of the game you might not have noticed before. Or caught. Yeah. 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 So uh, that's available in the humble weekly sale, and it is available on the Linux. Pretty cool. Very cool. One last bit of gaming news before we move on, and this is uh, finally we get to say these kinds of things apply to Linux users. Mm -hmm. Valve has announced Steam Family Sharing. Nice. If you have a Steam account, you can now share your game library with up to 10 other people. And uh, they get access, so for example, if I, I could share my game library, I believe, with it, you. You don't actually yeah. have to be family, and then you have access to any of the games in my library. That's very cool, actually. Yeah, you, you could download them on your machine wow. and play them now. There is a catch. Okay. Oh, okay. So if uh, say we both say you say I share my library with you, right. And uh, I'm really into Duke Nukem. Yeah. Let's say I was really yeah. If I decide to play Duke Nukem while you're playing it, you get a notification in game that says, "Hey man, you got a few minutes to sign out because Chris is playing now, or you can buy it." You know why this is okay? Remember back in the day when you go to an arcade and you wanted to play the game next, and you put your quarter up on the on the top of the uh, thing. Yeah. That's all this is. Yeah. It's just, it's ba but instead of a quarter, it's basically more of a you know like a punch to the gut. But that's yeah. okay. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I suppose so. Yeah, hey, I'm trying to look at a positive. Hey, you know, I, I'm excited the fact that we got a family sharing set up here because let's face it, the family that slays together stays together. So yeah, that's okay. I would love it to just be like, uh, here, we're just going to extend this license. I mean, obviously, right. I guess that's not going to. But this happen. is okay. This is, I'm, you know, it's a, uh, it's. I'm quite happy with that. Actually, I think it's kind of cool. It's a great way. It's a great way to get like, uh, say, like. Um, Man. You know, like a family member who maybe uh, is a little bit casual on their gaming. They're not going to be in too often. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I've got a ton of games here in my library that, uh, you know, I don't actively play. Sure. Like, you know, if you look, most of them aren't even downloaded. Just to right. Save this space. <laughs> right. So somebody could be playing the hell out of Cave Story right now, and I don't even have it installed. Yeah, you They're wouldn't care. Bumped, yeah. you're, right? you're doing something else. You're, you're doing Duke Nukem and whatnot. So yeah. the, practical, the practical situation is it's probably not going to be too much of an issue. The problem where it falls down, and it seems like the most critical part of it is... Wouldn't it be great if you could have one other person use it at the same time for multiplayer games? That would be helpful. And I would be you know? even willing to say, okay, so you have a family you have the family license and then you got the family deluxe license to where you have that option. You kick down a couple extra bucks or something. Right. I'm, I'm cool with that. Because I understand right. that there's method to their madness. That's yeah. fine. Yeah. Yeah. Just okay. make an option. Make All an right. option. So there you go. That's a little yeah. bit of news we can finally get to say uh, applies to Linux users. Yeah, which that's is fun. really cool. All right, I want to move on to uh, Plasma 2, the snapshot. For those interested in the progress of KDE Framework 5 and Plasma 2, mm -hmm. we've got a video here that was posted up on, uh, on a blog, and I'm just going to play a little bit of it while we talk about this. The demo video of the new Plasma shell running includes with a panel and the task manager. It shows an applet doing some OpenGL tricks. Kwin man Window Manager and Compositor are all running in Qt5 Framework 5. Uh, there's Console, which is also which also gets shown here. Maybe if I, could, if I bring it up on a bigger screen, it's... It's a little, you see, it's a little bare bones still, yeah. but this is... And this is with HD toggled, so it's a little, uh, you know... This is QT5. Uh, this, is the, this, is the, this is the beginnings of the next iteration of KDE. Um, I, yeah, I, I just show it to say, we're, here we are. Obviously, you can't make any judgments of, of its functionality at this point. Because sure. they're still kind of putting it all together. Um, but, but it gives us some idea of the layout they're going for and uh, whatnot. Yeah. It, it's, I wonder it's, what capture software they're using. I, no, he's recording this. He's just recording the monitor. Oh, yeah. You can oh. see the. You see the. Uh, oh, there. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But uh, but still, it's interesting because it kind of gives us kind of a preview. We of what well, there's going the for. there's the widget. That's the part I was waiting for. Uh, Look at that widget with that open gel. That okay. That's, that, that is that's cool. It's pure eye candy, but that is really cool. Total eye candy. But if you know if you got a computer to do it, shoot. But yeah. don't you worry, Matt. When it gets closer to uh, go time, <laughs> we'll uh, be sure to break the audio for us. Well, uh, we, oh. <laughs> Oh, I'm going to burn for that. No, I, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I, the eye candy's great. We'll do a demo. Do we'll do a demo. We'll do a demo when it gets okay. closer. Here's another video right. that's posted in the comment section that shows some more widgets going and uh, stuff like that. Ooh. I just I just do this to market in the show. 
So that way we now have it in the show's history. Well, and I think it really it illustrates for us, too, that they can't ever say that Linux is ugly. KDE is not ugly. KDE That's really cool. very, yeah. very attractive. I don't know how practical that wobble is, but I think it's pretty But neat. it's hot looking. It's cool. What, what, it, what it shows you is it's demonstrating the underlying technology to make it possible, and that's the part I think is cool. Well, more importantly, it's also putting a little wobble in, in our walk with, uh, <laughs> with our desktop. Oh, Matt. <laughs> Speaking of KDE, remember KDE Connect, that technology oh, yes. that uh, allowed your KDE and Android phone to be more in sync with each other? Which was pretty cool. Well, go Google Summer of Code 2013 is coming to an end, mm -hmm. and they're working hard to get a stable and functional version of KDE Connect before it comes to an end. Oh. So they're taking two actions. They're beginning to distribute tarballs of the KDE client sources, and they've uploaded the Android app to the Play Store, which is now available. So this requires this Android component. Wow. So this KDE yeah. Connect app is now in the Android App Store, and here you get to see some screenshots. That's very cool. Here's the media control portion of it. Uh, here's the devices you can choose to connect with. Um, and so they're shipping code. And they've also done some improvements. Uh, they've turned on RSA encryption. Good. Yep. Good. I really uh, like that. Also symmetric encryption. And they've improved the Android interface, uh, interface, and it should also be now compatible with older Android 2.3 devices. Ooh, that's so we're now, now we're talking Android 2.3 up to latest Android devices. The early integration with KDE, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. where you're going to be able to control your media playback, share notifications, which was the big one for me. And, yeah. And if you remember in the demo, that one of the things they were talking about was clearing a notification on your Android phone would clear it out of the KDE notifications tray. Well, and I like the fact that you have that notification option in KDE, but especially because the existing options are always browser-dependent. Like there's, a, I think it's Mighty Text or whatever it is that right. basically requires yep. you to have Chrome open yeah. or Firefox open, and I don't necessarily want that. But having it built into my desktop, that's a sweet spot for me. They say they've seen a lot of interest in the project, too, and they've got it up yeah. on GitHub. You can go grab the right uh, source for the KDE component or for the Android component. Both are up on GitHub. Maybe checking that out myself. You know? So it is KDE Connect 0.0 one technology preview. Mm. Mm. Good stuff. I actually really want to try that. Yeah, right? Okay, I wanted to get a little under the hood. We haven't talked too much about uh, some of the new System D features because okay. it's one of those features where I kind of feel like... Well, they're always evolving, too. So it's yeah. like you always feel like you're a, a, day, a, day, a day late and a dollar short trying to explain it. You know? But we got a new System D announced, and I wanted to bring it up because I wanted to get some input from the Arch users out there because okay. they might be affected by some changes that are coming up. Other distro users will be affected too, but the distro will probably just take care of it at time of upgrade. Right. And you really and Arch users take care of their own. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, but here's some cool stuff. Mm -hmm. Systemd 207, which is really, now when we talk about Systemd features, what we're really saying is all Linux but Ubuntu <laughs> and its derivatives get this. Yeah. Which is a That's respectable fine. amount. They, they but, do their upstream yeah. things. fine. So in 207, I like this, there's a restart option for services now that, uh, that work with a new watchdog setting. It will restart a service automatically if that server stops sending out watchdog keep alive messages. So let me give you an example. Okay, I can see this being useful. Back actually. in the day, I worked at the bank. Right. And sure. we had so many printers. And I, I, we, you, oh my gosh, we used to have 30 Windows print servers. Holy cow. And, and because, because of these massive print jobs mm -hmm. and the Windows system would just, this is back in the NT4 and Windows 2000 oh, days, yeah. the spooler servers would just, Crash <laughs> just all the time. Yeah, totally. And if it crashed, it would bring down all of the printers. So one of the ways we handled the load and isolate the damage was by having a bunch of them. Yeah, that's all you could really do at the time, right? And so when I just started to discover Linux, first place I attacked was proxy services mm -hmm. and saving us bandwidth because we were using up all our bandwidth. Sure. Second place I attacked was Samba because our NT4 file server had fallen over. The, the, the third place I went after was print serving. Makes sense. And Cups was, uh, Cups was a thing by then, mm -hmm. and I knew that the common Unix printing system was something to go for. Right. So right. I built one Cup server to replace, like, these 30 Windows print servers, oh, right? Oh, right. Yes. However, right. every now and then, Cups would still crash. And you may not, and you may not know it unless you're thinking to right. check for it, right? And so what I, after learning the hard way a couple of times would do, is I just created a cron job that would check for the process, and if the process didn't exist, it would clean up any running files and then start the process again. Smart. So this is essentially, if, the, if that service supports a watchdog heartbeat, so mm -hmm. like if they built into that cup ser start service to say, hey, send out a watchdog to the mm -hmm. service and just right. heartbeat, then, then SystemD now has the ability to detect when that heartbeat disappears. And if that heartbeat misses a few beats, SystemD can now restart the service for you automatically to get things back online. So it reports back with a, it's a dead, it's dead, Jim, mm -hmm. and it's able to then recover. while While mm -hmm. logging it and, you know, that's doing great. all of that. Yeah, so that's, that's a nice to have feature. Um, be really cool if it also threw into the logs, like, causality, like, what exactly, what knocked it out. Yeah, that would probably be more that, dependent on the actual service. Sure, sure, sure. But still, you know. Uh, so there's know. another thing that I'm looking forward to as a laptop user. There's now a minimum, a minimal tool, they're calling mm -hmm. it, to save and restore display backlight across reboots. Nice. So it will restore the backlight setting as late as possible in the shutdown process. 
and then restore it as early as possible during the reboot. That would be nice. Now, here's the changes that I kind of want to tune into the Arch users out there to find out if this is stuff we're going to have to deal with. Right. Uh, System D will no longer pass any environment from the kernel into initrid, uh, initri, init D, whatever, init, uh, yeah. to system services. If you want to set an environment for all services, do it via a kernel command line in the system D dot set environment assignment. So what essentially uh, what this is basically saying is there's an old way to pass things along to services. Okay. That's going away. Systemd used to sort of be compatible with the old method. Now there's a new way to do that. But then it's kind of met with a double whammy. The systemd sysctl tool will no longer natively read the slash etsy sysctl.com. If desired, the file should be symlinked to etsy sysctl.d 99sysctl.com. We'll have the details in the show notes. Apart from providing legacy support, by a symlink rather than built-in code, it also makes otherwise hidden order of applications of different files visible. But the result is if you have certain settings specified in this uh, systemctl.com file, unless you symlink that to this new location, when you reboot next time, systemd will not be reading that. So I think that probably will affect them. I think probably what will end up happening is that they'll basically tell people what to do in, in their next email blast when they do, yeah. in fact, release this. I'm I sure they're usually pretty good about I don't know that. if the init scripts problem will affect Arch users, but I think the systemctl.com problem. I think, yeah, the latter I definitely think will yeah. affect. And either way, their Arch is awesome about making sure that everybody's aware oh, yeah, what's the, going yeah. on. Yeah, so. I just you know, want to make sure you know before you do an update. Yeah, I think, <laughs> always check your, yeah, check your email before you I guess if Arch, somebody hasn't fully plan. moved away from init scripts at this point, they're kind of screwed either way. You kind of uh, need to. I mean, yeah. I wonder, I wonder do I use that? I'm going to check. I'm going to cap my I, I can't think of the last time I've used init scripts. It's been see. a while. If I, uh, here, I'll bring up my full screen. If I, uh, I'm going to go look, I'm going to pull up console here, Matt, and I will cat that file. And do I have anything in there? Oh, I have quite a bit of stuff yeah, in there. Yeah, okay. Okay, all okay. right. So, hmm, well... I'd like to know about that. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, like I said, I'm sure, you know, the, uh, the, um, undoubtedly the Arch uh, announcement will have uh, some workarounds available. So. I would say, yeah, you know what? Chat room's got it. Just don't reboot. I don't have a problem. Yeah. There it is, I'm okay right? with you that. Know, no power schmauer. You know, that's okay. Of course, the problem is I play so many darn video games. Yep. That's the problem. Matt. That problem. could be an issue. Yeah. It could be an issue. And how uh, all that works out. Uh, anyways, I yeah. mention it because we are at a very cool time right now. Oh, pfft. And the other main feature of System D is that it will also have automatic GPT partition discovery, which should make it easier for uh, new users to Linux. Because to us, it might seem weird, but to yeah. new users, it's going to seem obvious. Cool. I guess the reason why I mention it is I want, I want to make sure people kind of realize we're in a really cool time right now in Linux. Uh, the kernel is more awesome than it's ever been. Oh, it, yeah. And like it just keeps getting more awesome. Like Our kernel is very awesome. Mm -hmm. um, then you combine System D, which... At first, I was a little meh on, but now Systemd, this, I believe, this release of Systemd had uh, contributions from 44 different developers. Whoa. I mean, we got a good base. It's not all Lennar pottering, you know, sure. doing this. It's we got a good base of people. A lot of them are Red Hat employees, but it's still a good base. A either way. Yeah. Can't hold that against them. No. Right? I kid. I kid. Uh, then we've got Wayland, right? And mm -hmm. Wayland is really going to be exciting and cool, too. Yeah, they're coming into hyperdrive. I mean, they're really coming into their own. We're actually seeing progress. We're actually yeah. seeing results. It's great. Yeah, I, I, so I think... Um, this is all stuff that um, hmm. long-time Linux users, if we kind of zoom out and look at this, we're about to see a lot of really cool different things kind of all come together and come to fruition around the same time. I'm starting to see a picture of 2014 that looks just as exciting as 2013 did about right. video games. Yep. I mean, really, some people would say maybe the video game era of 2013 hasn't panned out like it has for Linux. I, however, and maybe just because I don't play as much games mm -hmm. as some people, I am very thrilled with... 2013. I think it's been a fantastic year for Linux uh, as far as games. Oh, and, there's and no question apps. of it. Just I mean, looking at it mathematically, as far as Huge, Steam right? coming on yeah. board, you Huge. know, all the other indie games really I mean, being big. Sure. Yeah. I mean, we've got some great stuff yeah. now. 2014 is going to be like this massive mm. infrastructure improvement that is uh, is like really going to modernize Linux. And not that Linux isn't already incredibly modern, but you you know you're looking at it, you can see vestiges of the 90s still. And I think by taking it compartmentalized like this really allows uh, Linux to continue to be awesome because it's not trying to do everything in one year. It's saying, okay, this year we're really going to push the gaming thing. All right, now we're going to work on the infrastructure stuff. Okay, now we're going to maybe work on GUIs, maybe in 2015, whatever. It may be. <laughs> you know, well, I'm not saying. saying it's going to be the year of Linux desktop next year. But what I'm saying is it's going to be the year of Linux just getting more and more kick-ass. Right. Every uh, year's Linux. I'm, I'm just looking at this stuff now, and I'm thinking, God, it's getting good in 2013, so and we're well, getting near the end. And newbies coming into it 2014, 2015 are going to be taking for granted stuff that we're blown away by. That's the funny part. Uh, yeah, that's that's what really rubs me That's what way. I was looking at that G parted, you know, where, yeah. where GPT partitions, where SystemD is going to automatically discover GPT partitions. Like, for us, that's like, wow, really cool. Yeah, right. And the new users, they're like, yeah, 
I would hope so. Yeah, it's like, well, of course they were. What else would they do? Well, you know. All right, I got something crazy for you to uh, end the show with. Whoever, who knows, Matt? Who knows? Who knows? Um, um, it's called phone blocks. Have you heard of this? Phone? No. Get ready for this one. It's. I've always said I wish that you could have a sort of build your own phone, like you can with a PC. That'd be kind of cool. I yeah. really, you know, I want to see this just treated like a PC platform. Sure. Well, here we go. It's called. Phone blocks, phone. and it allows you to assemble the phone you want. And it's under funding right now. I, I think it's been funded, um, and uh, it it almost seems like one of those ideas oh, that's dude. too far out there. Holy erector set, Batman! That is so awesome. So this is, they talk about how so they talk about how all of these phones have components that when one of them goes bad, mm -hmm. like not enough storage or the battery's not good enough or whatever right. it is, you have to throw out the entire thing, right? Sure. Yeah, I'll play a little what bit else are you going to do with it, right? One of the fastest growing waste streams and they're in the illustrating world. The problem. And our phone is one of the biggest causes. So this is a new kind of phone. It's made of blocks. Detachable blocks. They are all connected to the base. And the base connects everything together. Electrical signals are transferred through the pins and two small screws lock everything in place. So if, for instance, your phone is getting a little slow, you can just upgrade the block that affects the speed. Or if something breaks, you can easily replace it with a new one, or update it with the latest version. Another great thing about this is, you can customize your phone. So let's say this is your phone, and you do everything in the cloud. Why not replace your storage block for a bigger battery block? If you're like this guy and love to take pictures, why not upgrade your camera? Or if you don't care about any of this stuff, you can keep it simple and get a bigger speaker. You can choose the blocks you want, that is support absolutely. the brands you like. Isn't this really something? I mean, it's or like, as ideas go, blocks. it's like, that hits the nail on the like head. Like they have a solar so block, things. right? They have a Bluetooth block, an NFC block. Well, the way they explain it, it's like, you know, you want a, you want a dumb phone. We got you world. covered. You can you can do more battery, bigger screen, bigger speaker, whatever. You know, you, you want a smartphone, you're really into cloud, or you want local. I mean, you're in control. That is right. so and, cool. And I also don't like this, uh, you know, buy and trash in, in a year to um, um, culture, I guess. You yeah, can almost say right. we have now with these devices. This also seems to where like... where things become... This is the thing... The, the obsolete thing really spoke to me because that drives me nuts. Yeah, right? right? Like, they, they make a good point. Like, pop in a new CPU. Pop in a new uh, Wi-Fi module when the new Wi-Fi <laughs> yeah, standard right? comes out. Like, holy cow. Uh, you know, you got you to gotta question what the build quality would be like. You got to question, like, you know, durability and things like that, of course. Um, and you got to wonder, what would it run? Linux? Android? Probably Linux. I can't imagine, but it would run Android, but maybe. I, there's a lot of... Impracticals, you know. There's a lot of IP mm -hmm. issues. It, mm -hmm. You know, how do you? Are the individual components going to, as a whole, right. be more expensive? Could it be like a nine hundred dollar? All these questions remain. But the idea is so awesome. The, yeah, it's the right idea. And and who knows if the technology is really there yet? And I love that. the idea of like, oh, here's a higher, here's a higher end camera module. Yeah, here's a higher end battery module with a louder speaker. Mm -hmm. I, it, to me, I don't know if this particular phone block implementation is going to take off. I mean, it, it, I think. Uh, oh no, they haven't. They're eighty eight percent funded. Whoa. Um, and Whoa, they're using Thunderclap to do it. Thunderclap. I don't know about Thunderclap, but the problem is that Flash uh, object gets in the way. Yeah. 45 days left. Pretty neat. Pretty neat concept. Pretty, mm. uh, pretty revolutionary in a lot of ways. And, you know, we look at what uh, some of the uh, big players are doing. That's crazy. I think maybe that's what it would take. I oh, this would change every... I mean, like, see, and you asked me to invest in a phone. I probably could see myself doing that because it's like that's thinking down the road. This, I mean, what you do know? you think? Maybe uh, would it, wouldn't it take like a company like it would take a major player. Say like yeah. Google took came right. to Motorola and said, "All right, guys, let's let's take the mobile industry to the next level. Let's make yep. it let's make it something where people can custom build these solutions." I mean, this would be huge for enterprises. Oh, that's the final nail in Apple's whole situation. It would. Right? It, it I mean, would absolutely. App Store doesn't matter. You anymore, could have like, now. It's like you have an App Store of hardware <laughs> instead of just software. Like. Holy and you cow. could have like as an enterprise, you could have like Whoa. you know you could build these for your for your users. Right. Um, but I think it would take somebody with the resources of a major yep. company. Got to get that buying power in. You got to subsidize the phones, you know, or or at least get it to where you can get the cost down. So if someone's buying it outright, it's reasonable. If um, the modules could yeah. be made by other people too and sold on Amazon and things like that, I mean that would really be something. Yeah. No, I'm sure they'll all be made like some some we'll sweatshop see. somewhere. It's but, like you know, an, but either way. it's like an app store for your hardware. Right. In the store, you buy your blocks, read reviews, and sell old blocks. So they're going to have a block so, store. 
where you can make your own blocks and sell them. Even if it was an $800 phone, which is crazy expensive, I get that. But if you know that when you're ready to upgrade that your components hold up well enough, they have resale value. So you can then take those funds right. and then upgrade. Well, and and think about the other cool. thing: if it's an open platform where anybody could sell, you mm. could have you could have companies like um, um, I don't I don't know, Canon could make a module right. for the camera. You could buy a Canon oh, branded God, camera right. module, or right? Or Nikon or whatever. You yeah. could buy it. Not that this is necessarily you'd want to, but the, the possibility is a Duracell branded battery that's like an extended battery, right? Oh, that uh, would be pretty. De- I mean, and that's a, smart branding for the companies, really. Right. Yeah. So, um, mm. just like you have different manufacturers who can make different video cards for PC components now. It becomes like a NASCAR race car, almost instantly. Yeah. You know, and all these and plus, it's a fun puzzle to put together. Right, yeah. So, that's phone blocks, and they're doing a little bit different type of funding system. I'm, I'm not familiar with Thunderclap, but, uh, mm. you know, with the troubles that we talked about recently with uh, Indiegogo yeah. and PayPal, maybe it's good. Pay people pay. Are trying other things. Bye-bye. Yeah. So, there you go. Phone blocks. We'll have a link to that video. If you're listening to the audio version, it is Definitely worth watching. Oh, dude, yeah, it's just like that is probably the most game-changing phone I've seen. Yeah, ever. If that thing actually yeah. was made, it would change everything. Oh, it really would. And I would imagine it would have to run Linux. I'm sure. Yeah. I'm sure. Yeah, absolutely. All right, Matt. That's all the news for this week. This week, Matt and I are going to help you take great notes, and there's lots of different software to do that, including mm-hmm. lo- online and locally to your yep. machine. And honestly. I think everybody could use a little bit better organization, Matt. This guy. <laughs> well, I wasn't going to say. I mean, yeah. <laughs> but first, before we get into some of these great apps, I want to thank our segment sponsor, System76, creators of machines born to run Ubuntu, oh, yeah. and all kinds of great Linux distributions. These are great machines to begin with. So when you start with great hardware, with Linux-compatible hardware, it's going to run great on everything. Look at that beautiful Ultra Pro. If you've been looking for a great, powerful Ultrabook with a 1080p IPS display, Haswell processors, that fantastic Intel brand new video card in there that makes games look great with fantastic performance. This is the machine you've got to look at. And I just like to mention that I noticed this a couple because I've been thinking about uh, you know redoing the encoding setup. Right. Oh, dum, bum, bum, and the machine that comes to mind when you want optimal performance is the Leopard Extreme. Oh, now here's yeah. the thing. Here's the thing. They've just had this note on the System76 website that said available in coming, you know, available soon. Yeah, now right. they've got a countdown arriving oh, in three days, 23 hours and 34 minutes. The new Leopard Extreme, Extreme Performance from Extreme Components. I'm kind of thinking. And I remember the last one. That thing was boosting. Look, at they got these teaser images in oh, here. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, yes, they do. Yes, yeah. ooh, we got a teaser video. Mm, what is this? Is this, uh, is this a... Uh... Got some audio. Oh. 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 See some fans spinning it up there. Oh, there is music. Yeah. This is a tease. Oh, dude. Oh. Look at this. It's like okay, so... Hardware porn. Oh, no. I don't... Uh, September September seventeenth. I don't have the willpower. I do not have the willpower to not buy that because I kind of need a machine right now. In <laughs> oh, fact, I kind of need two machines right now. I I need to replace this computer right yeah. here too. I got to tell you, uh, System wow. seventy six makes me the kind of machines that I can get excited about. These are great yeah. computers that run Linux. Fantastic. System seventy six is a mm-hmm. great company. They're very passionate about Linux. They're involved in the Linux community. They they are. This is not a niche of their business. Right. This is their business. Making they only make computers designed to run Linux. And in fact, one of the fun things about System76 is because they are engaged with the community. Is they've got a Google Plus community going over on their. We'll have it linked in the show notes. Their Google Plus page on Fridays are are. Oh, they're awesome! Yeah. yeah. Emma oh, look! They just it. posted that video. Oh, did they? Really? Yeah. So, Emma, Emma's really good about yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah. Emma's great. Everybody over at System76 yep. is fantastic. And uh, one of the things they'll often do on Fridays is a free sticker giveaway. So you can always go over there and. Uh, <laughs> you see? Did you see that little uh, panel thing they no, got? No, no. It, it was awesome. So customer receives his new uh, his new laptop. New Ultra Pro. Mm, he says, "Oh my." God, he opens up. It says it flies. It's so shiny. <laughs> it's all like shiny. You know? <laughs> now I have the power. And for audio listeners, basically we got like a comic style bubble talk going on here. Yeah, take that stupid hard work. They also included the story behind the machines they're shipping lately with yep. that wonderful background that yeah. they've included. Um, they gave credit to the photographer uh, and Ian. how they use open source software to make that uh, photography happen. Yeah, it's yeah, great. It's really, it's really awesome. Yeah, I've had my eye on well, pretty much any one of the. The awesome notebooks they got, but the Ultrabook is definitely, oh, it's been making me want to. I can't believe we got a date on that Leopard Extreme. Uh, uh, yeah. That, le- le- you know, that Leopard Extreme, want, honestly, want, want. Um, the, I, 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 I have a few jobs that I could put that thing at. So it <laughs> might end up in my, in my hot little hands. Oh, man. All right, let's start talking about okay. notes. Cool. I'm going to start with the two apps that I want to recommend to folks, and then cool. I'm going to give some honorable mentions. All right. 
I think the elephant, literally, in the room is Evernote. Yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah, it, it is. I know. I've and see. I've never really partaken in it myself, but I know people do swear by it. Yeah, ever. It is amazing. Evernote is probably the biggest hole in my heart on the Linux desktop. Mm -hmm. Evernote uh, has the the reason why Evernote is great is the is the mobile apps on Android is just really good. Is so good. Yeah. And it takes you can take pictures in the Evernote app, and then it'll OCR the mm -hmm. contents of the pictures, and then you can search based on it. The synchronization between the web and desktop and Android app is mm -hmm. is really really nice. But one of the things you have to remember is all of these types of services um, are on the cloud. And in a post-NSA revelation world, in a post-Snowden world, right. we do kind of have to have an additional layer of skepticism when we're looking at some That's of right. these. There is uh, some different clients for Linux to interface with Evernote, like Everpad and a couple of others. Yeah. But they're not complete solutions. They're, they're not quite baked. Uh, they're, they're, no. they're getting there. You know, not they're, for they're, functionality they're lightly I brown. They're no, lightly brown. The tools I'm going to talk about today have a lot more functionality than mm -hmm. those do. Um, okay. And the, the two tools I'm going to focus in on uh, also require that you manage it a little more yourself. Maybe yeah. you take care of the syncing and you take care of the backup. But, but that's good. We kind of like control. that as Linux users. Yeah. yeah. So I want to start with one that hasn't seen an update in about two years. And okay. It, I, I think if there's anything that I, if I could just relay something to the KDE community, you guys have got to pick this up because it is yeah. a great app that really is filling a hole on the KDE desktop. There's, there's like KJots and there's other Node applications. They don't come anywhere. They don't come anywhere near basket notepad. Functionality is just not as there as I'm this gonna, one. I'll give you a little demo okay. here in a second, cool. man. I think you're going to be pretty impressed. Right. Uh, it's, it's easy to take all kinds of notes. Mm -hmm. It integrates in with your system tray, so you can, you can be down here and you can right-click and you can make a new note oh. right then and there, right? So you can, right. I guess you just regular click. Don't look. Oh, look, don't oh, look oh, oh, eyes closed, notes. eyes closed. Um, and and it, it supports all kinds of features like inline images, mm -hmm. checkboxes, uh, markup, all kinds of nice stuff. Problem is, I don't think it's been updated since like 2010. And that kind of puts you in an iffy position. It's like makes me eh, a little nervous. I don't know. However, it's QT4. Yeah, it works on KD4 fantastically. It's in just about every repo that's ever uh -huh. existed, and it and it works really great. Here it is, right here. In fact, some Eagle Eye uh, viewers caught it last week on the show. We got somebody that wrote and said, "Hey, what was that? What was it that Chris was using?" Oh, well, wow. this is Basket Notes, and I used it to uh, to manage our emails and stuff. Like, um, or I also used it, for example, when I was researching on Spider Oak. So you see how it can dynamically oh, reflow wow. the content. So if I if yeah. I resize the window, the content reflows so you really got dynamic really nice. resizing. Yeah, and uh, and you mentioned that it works with email. That that piques my interest a little bit. It has all kinds of integrations. Yeah. yeah. So um, uh, I'll get to that. Okay. Uh, so here it is. You have these different block sections. Mm -hmm. You can move them around a little bit, a la OneNote, for example, oh. if you're familiar with that. And yeah. you can put stuff in its place. When you right click, you get kinds of nice fancy features like. Uh, um, Some new dialogues opening up there. Looks like. There we go. Oh. So I can insert an image, a text, um, and it has really cool integration with KDE, too. Nice. I can import a launcher from the <laughs> KDE menu. <laughs> so say if this was, wow. say I'm talking about Spider Oak here, right. and I had my whole write-up about Spider Oak, mm -hmm. I could actually put the Spider Oak launcher in my notes here. So during the demo, okay. I could just click in my notes. So let me... If, if well, I that could, would be kind of cool because then as you're, as you're reading down your list and you're coming down your list and you want to actually hit to the launcher, it's like, oh, okay, click that, boom, there's Spider Oak, it's opened up, and you never had to leave the window, which is really nice from a presentation yeah. point of view. Mm -hmm. So here we go. Here's the Spider right. Oak icon. So boom, oh, I added yeah. the Spider Oak, Spider Oak launcher and I can... I can uh, it automatically figures out the icon mm -hmm. based on the launcher mm -hmm. menu and all that kind of stuff. Good stuff. Uh, and I can put in checklists, and I can. Uh, there's, uh, there's also um, the ability. This is this is one that was kind of important for me. Mm -hmm. Is you can uh, you can take a screenshot, so you can say grab screen zone. Right. It moves basket notes out of the way for me automatically, so I'm not trying to juggle with that. When right. I'm trying to take a screenshot, turns my cursor into a selection. I drag the window around <laughs> oh, what dude, I want. That's great. Click it and double click, and now it imports it. You see, it says it right down here at the bottom, grab screen zone, and it moves it into Spider Oak for me. So now that's in Spider Oak. Well, I like the fact that it's all built into the node. You're not running like 15 different applications to get this kind of functionality. I love the fact that it's all inclusive in this, and I would agree with you. KDE really does need to pick this up. Yeah, and see, this is one of those things where when you're doing research to be able to grab something like that or to grab mm -hmm. color from a screen or be able to import like right. a text file or a PDF file. What a time saver. And then to be able to cross-reference other notes. Oh, these are all kinds of features that I think are, are pretty great. Um, and uh, and uh, I would love to see Basket Notes get a little more, a little more love because there's a, lot of, there's a lot of power here. Oh, and for the audio listeners, on the left-hand side, you have, a, and you have basically baskets, and it's just a treed hierarchy yes. of, uh, depending yep. on how you have everything laid out. It's exactly. really tidy. 
It's yeah. very well laid out. It's very clean. And you can see how I can move components around so I could have like a staging oh, area and then because you can link to other nodes. And it feels very nodes. mind map oriented. Yeah. I, I, that's yeah. what my brain instantly goes to. It's like, oh, this is intuitive to me. I don't need to read a big old instruction manual to run this. Like, this, this, is, is great. this is one of those things where you can really see some of the power of the different Qt applications mm -hmm. working together. Like, Here's a section, links, right? I have, sure. I have web links in here. You see when they're added, when they were last modified. Wow. Here's a checkbox. I can mark that as done. Mm -hmm. That's all, that's all oh, awesome. Nice. It's very KDE QT dependent. Mm -hmm. This would sure. be probably the biggest drawback if you're not a KDE user. You can also tag notes with uh, to do, preference, highlight, important. You can also add your own tag categories and things this like that. Is, uh, yeah, this is, but even still, you can technically install the libraries and run it under anything you wanted to. You, you can, uh, you, you can know. group uh, notes together, sure. and you know all kinds of really nice stuff. I, I think it's worth it. Yeah, I think it's worth the extra libraries, even if you're not running KDE. And then the most important part is it doesn't have a built-in sync function. Sure. But you just tell it where you want it to store the notes at, and it mm -hmm. and. Uh, you can back up and you can export. That's helpful. I and like you can, that. And you can export uh, to a basket archive or it'll take the note and it'll say if you have something with a lot of formatting on it or something like mm -hmm, that, mm -hmm. you can export this out to an HTML file. And I'm willing to bet even if you did it as a basket archive that should the project go south that you would probably be able to bring it into something yeah. else. Otherwise, I mean, if you want kind of a read-only environment, you can just go HTML. And so. it, has a backup, it has a backup option and you it automatically has a place where you can back up to Good and uh, you, you can... Uh, so you're going to just put it right into it a TarGZ file. Sync that uh, directory there, and you're exactly. good to go. Exactly. So that's Bam! my solution for both these. Mm -hmm. uh, for the both that I'm going to go over is BitTorrent Sync. However, there is another contender out there mm -hmm. that actually shows quite a bit of promise. Oh, it's yeah? not quite as fancy as Basket Notes, but it's under development, okay. and they're working. And I don't have I don't I don't have it yet. I mm -hmm. haven't seen it working yet. But I, there are people working on syncing via own cloud with. Oh. Zim Notes. That would be nice. I'd like that feature. So Zim Notes, the thing that stands out different about Zim Notes compared to Basket is think of Zim Notes as more of a personal wiki inside an application. That's what it looks like to yeah. me. Yeah, it has a very on the le on the right hand panel it looks very wiki oriented, and on the left you got your navigation. So watch, I will make a link just kind of now it's got its own wiki syntax. But uh -huh. so if I go in here and I say, um, you know, uh, uh, we were talking about barbecue today, right? right so barbecue. I'll say. Uh, uh, barbecue um, to do or something like that, okay. and when I hit space, it automatically oh, makes that a weird. hyperlink. Nice. And because that's just like a wiki, then as soon as you now, if I go, if I bring my cursor over and I hit enter, I'm now editing that note. That is now that actually it's not as like shiny as the other app, but right. I do find this to be very functional because you can really compound and you that could down. you could do file new note right. I mean that was just that's just one way to do it real easy. And instantly your uh, your left hand navigation goes to an index mode to where you yep. can actually see where you're treated out at. Yep, yep. It's it's nice and it's easy mm -hmm. to follow. And there's a couple of cool things about it. One of which. Is it doesn't uh, and now it has a series of plugins available for it. Oh, cool! Which gives me a lot of hope because there are uh -huh. different plugins that are in development. However, I've turned on some of the plugins and I haven't actually gotten them to work. And I think maybe okay. it's because I'm under KDE and I'm not under GNOME because this is a GTK. Uh, if, yeah, app that's probably what it is actually. Because one of them is a, is the screenshot functionality that I liked uh -huh. from Basket uh -huh. Notes. However, it does make up for that with a Firefox extension. Um, and so if if you uh, if you have a if you use the Firefox web browser and mm -hmm. you get the Zim Firefox extension, you can clip web pages right into Zim from Firefox. So let's say if oh. I'm over here on um, I don't know, let's go to Engadget, right. and uh, uh, this is a great article about how awesome AT and T is. Whatever. <laughs> it's like sure they are. Yeah. If I uh, yeah. see, let's try to grab the image too. If yeah, I highlight totally. that and I right click on it, I should have uh, send to Zim right oh, here. Oh, right on. So it's in the right click dialog. Zim opens up uh, a dialogue right then and there. It says, mm -hmm. "This is this is a difference." Where Basket Notes just throws it in your basket. Right. Zim immediately comes up and says, "How do you want to categorize this? What namespace does it go in, and mm -hmm. what do you want to give the title?" And so I have a Clips namespace where I just dump all of my web browser clips into, and then I go check them out later. So Clips wasn't a default namespace. This is one you selected. I think initially it was, but I okay. just continued to use cool, it. Cool. Cool. Okay. Yeah. So you see, I have two clips over. I have an Engadget clip, and I have a mm -hmm. slash dot clip I did um, yesterday. Nice. And so there, there it is, right? There. Okay, so it didn't grab the JPEG, but but that's okay. It gave you yeah. uh, the yeah. uh, linkage for it, and yeah. that may be, you know, you, you may not necessarily need the JPEG. It's very nice for research. Now here's a couple sure. other things. You see, I have a needs done category. Oh, and it's got check boxes. It's got check boxes, and it it's real easy to make a check box. You just do uh, two brackets like that, and then you know oh. this is a oh. check box. Now check this out though. Another bracket D mm -hmm. colon. D -colon. Let's put let's put tomorrow's date in there, the 14th, and then I close that. Oh, except for I didn't have num on. <laughs> that's right. Uh, so uh, there we go. Uh, tomorrow's the 14th because today is Creepy Friday the 13th. Creepy Friday. Put that in there and I close that. Um, this 
system has the ability to sort of do a little syntax checking. Let me update my index first before I do okay. this. And when I hit this button, it goes through the whole wiki database and finds all of my to-dos in any notes, tells me what page it's in. Of course, they're oh, all in see, one page on just, this one. It went all nitro task on you. Yeah. I love that. So it is. Oh, so God, I can be great. inside a note. I could be talking about next right. week's Linux Action Show, and I can say, oh, man, before I... Before we talk about this, I need to make sure I have this ISO. You just sold me right yeah. there. <laughs> and <then> I, <laughs> it's like you sold me. And I can so. check it off, and I can check on this, and I can see where different stuff is at. You mm -hmm. can, Also, there's a syntax. You see how this one is yellow with right. a 1? It's got like a priority. Yeah, it's because I put a little bang in the line. So an exclamation mark means that it has a priority. I'm and you liking can, that. You can do priority 1, priority mm -hmm. 2. Mm -hmm. So it's got a bit of a syntax that once you learn, um, you, can get, you can get around pretty well, and easily. You, and, and to start out with, print, just print yourself off a quick cheat sheet. No big deal. Yeah, yeah. they have a built-in key bindings... Uh, guide yeah, there, right there here and one of the cool things about this is it's written in the actual zim wiki syntax itself oh. so you can just go in here and get inspirations like here's where i learned how to do check boxes right because All they right. just tell you how to type them out right here and auto formatting you can do headings and things like and you'll that. totally learn through the repetition so it's going to you're going to get the value pretty quickly yeah mm -hmm. yeah it was it was pretty quick and easy to understand it also has really good export features just like we had over on basket notes i like that. i can export out here to uh I can do the complete notebook or a single page Say which one I want. I can go out to HTML or Markdown, which oh, I like a lot, or uh, yeah, yeah. or an RST file. Right, and right. you can also do export templates. So if mm -hmm. you do, if, like if uh, you have client notes, like this is one of the things I was considering using this for is client notes, and you needed to produce notes on sure. a daily basis, and you wanted to follow a certain format, you could actually, uh, there's a templates directory you just drop into, and then it can read that templates directory. That's pretty directory. cool. And that's got yeah. presentation mode and everything. And cool. you can see over here it does online inline images. So I was able to uh, drop in an image. And one of the things that is a, that is a must-do on any note-taking application for me is I need to be able to drag and drop images yes. in there. Right. So, like, here's uh, this week on... Oh, come on. Really, guys? Right, here's, a, here's a weird <laughs> face. I can drag and drop and put that guy's weird right. face... Well, I was able to last last night. <laughs> it may be because... It could be because it's uh, next to another image or perhaps, uh, you know, new line know, or something yeah. like that. Or maybe I did it in Chrome. Let's try it in Chrome It here. could be in Chrome. So, uh, I'll bet it is. Yeah, Chrome's pretty good about that sort of thing. Yeah. So the drag and drop functionality was a little hit and miss. It also you have drag and drop functionality in basket notes. Takes I, a little practice, but yeah, it'll, it'll get to you. I think maybe I tried it. I think maybe I, let me try. Uh, and it here. could even be the image type, maybe uh, GIF versus uh, JPEG. I'll go. You know what I'll do is uh, I'll go grab something funny from the subreddit. Yeah, right see here. here. Oh, here was a meme somebody submitted. Oh, so let's yeah. see if I can. Uh, I should <laughs> right. be able to drag and drop this meme into Zim Notes. All right. So we'll see. I don't know. Maybe we'll see I if can. it works. I drag, drag and drop that Elite Force image in there. In fact, I'll put it up here. Maybe yeah, try, try, yeah. yeah, there yeah, we go. It was the new line, probably. Yeah. yeah. So you can, so at least for, at least out of Chromium, you can drag and drag your images in. Mm -hmm. And the reason why, I'm a very visual person. Yeah. So for me, if I can drag in things that I'll associate and things I might want to show in the show, uh, you know, that's that's really, that's kind Good of a stuff. perfect solution. I like it. So I think Zim Notes has the long-term potential here. I think uh, you go to zim-wiki.org, mm -hmm. and I think this is probably going to be the one you want to go with out of the two. Basket Notes is my personal favorite, and yeah. I feel like I'm just going to keep using it until it kicks the bucket. <laughs> but uh, And mainly also because I'm on KD. Oh, 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 another thing that Zim Notes does that I think is kind of nice is uh, it has this uh, a new note mode here. Let me see. It's right here. And you can do a quick note. And it just keeps, you can have a little, uh, it just, it, instead of having the whole interface up with the sidebar yeah. and everything like that, you can just have a little quick note window right here, and uh, you just, you know, as you're working, you just... Oh, yeah. You Sorry. can just quickly yeah. put one up in there. Which is, which is nice to have. And then you tight. can also then just quickly jump into your other notes from the menu mm -hmm. down here at the bottom. It just opens it's, up. It's got notes. the kind of functionality I would want from an app, so I think I'm kind of leaning more toward this yeah. one. So Zim Notes is probably the one to go with. I'm going to go with Basket Notes myself. Zim, Zim, Zim. But if I, were, if I were intellectually honest with myself, I'd recognize that it's probably end of days for that project. Yes. Now... A couple of honorable mentions that might work for you. It just didn't really quite meet uh, my snuff. Okay. Z Notes. Yeah, yeah. Z Notes is um, it's another Qt application, mm -hmm. and it's a little more basic. This is yeah. probably good for uh, you need essentially the digital equivalent of sticky pads. Right. You got tabs, so you can you can you know have multiple notes mm -hmm. up at one time. Comes up out of your system tray, goes back down. Mm -hmm. and Less just, features, but it's pretty uh, straightforward. Sure. Right. Supports minimal formatting yeah. uh, and writes them to a text file. Yeah. No sync, as far as I know. But if you just need real simple note-taking, that could do it. This one got a lot of recommendations, Golem. It is Golem. a, a cool simple Git-powered wiki. Oh. So it takes a little bit of setup because you got to have, uh, you got to have, well, probably... And we may have to have Fox News explain it to us. Yeah, you got to have a little, yeah. You got to have a little uh, Python and Ruby right. experience. But then it throws up a wiki page on your server that syncs the back end to Git, which is pretty cool. Now, that's cool functionality. It's highly specialized, but I could see that being very yeah. valuable if you're looking for that. And uh, this one came in a recommendation from uh, Peacemaker in the uh, IRC sub or in the uh, IRC sub in the uh, <laughs> Linux Action Show yeah. Reddit. 
He says, hey, everyone, I don't often post here, but I wanted to point out that on Linux Unplugged, it was mentioned you guys were talking about taking notes. Mm -hmm. Features I commonly include are titles, photo link, time step, calendar, tables, and things like that using org mode. I've used it for ages, and uh, it uh, works with Emacs. Oh, that's kind of cool. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I'll, I'll pull up org mode. It is uh, the nerdy way to do this on the, oh, there we go. On the uh, on the command line right. because you could be you can live you can live in there. There's also you can sync with a mobile app, which <laughs> That's is nice. Great. That's right? cool. That's cool. So and you just have to have access to either a web dev server, a Dropbox, or SSH, or just store it on the SD card, which is cool. I think a lot of people are going to be on the SD card. So yeah. you could note take right. You could you could pop the note like in me. I've got a built-in SD card reader. I could leave the SD mm -hmm. card reader in. I could leave the SD card in there. I could be in Emacs. I could be editing on that. Save it. Save it. And then when I go when I need to leave, I pop the SD card out and put it in my Android. And what's device. cool about that is there's no over the air. There's no cloud. There's no nothing. It's just SD card, nice and local. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. The IRC says, "Gosh, how many note taking applications are there?" Let me tell you guys. There's a lot. We trimmed them down. There's even more. We haven't even touched Nitro Task or any of the other ones. I right. mean, there's a lot of, and that was more Ubuntu specific, but there's a lot of them out there. And one last, uh, got to just give a shout out for Term, for the mm. terminal, and Nano. Term. This has worked for me for ages, where especially like when you've got a drop down terminal and you can just have like your notes in right. Nano. So you just, you know, you can have a Nano window running and you have a note yeah. folder. And you just keep this going all the time. Well, especially with that drop down like that, it's almost just you talk about the ultimate simplistic, just take a note, damn it, kind of yeah, thing, right? Yeah. Boom. And a lot of you know what? In a pinch, I'll do that. Totally. Save it to BitTorrent Sync, and then I could just move it over. Bob's right? your uncle. Yeah, it's real easy. Real easy. So there's tons and tons of tons mm -hmm. of options. Um, but I like here's the things, here's the main features I want to give a plug for Zim. Okay. Good export options. Excellent. Okay. Inline photo management. Wiki-like syntax that is awesome yes. with built-in to-do where you can have to-dos in any note and then it has a global task thing where you can uh, you can pull up the task mm -hmm. list and see where your tasks are for all the different notes. I think all of that is really quite nice. Yeah, the task list is a definitive thing for me. And it has an intelligent table of contents that will auto-build itself when you make new references or you start to-dos. So Zim Notes, I think, is probably the one to go with Unless uh, you just are kind of uh, picky about your UI like I am, and right. then I think basket notes is. <laughs> I mean, you know, well, he here's how I see it. I see basket notes as being the here and now is awesome. But I think Zim notes over time is going to win in the long run. Yeah. You know, I really Especially do. Especially if they get in um, own cloud syncing. Yeah. Because I was oh, that's gonna just this it. morning, I, I, you know, I take, I take my Bonobo out to the, to the live stream about yeah. an hour before the show starts to, to start powering some of the visuals. And so I don't have access to my Bonobo for an hour before the show. Sure. That's a long hour. Right, and right. I, I was thinking, you know, it is kind of key that I can do notes on other machines, and mm -hmm. OwnCloud would really solve that because I could just, I wouldn't, if I am just temporarily working on another machine, I wouldn't have to install any software. I would just right. open up OwnCloud. So I'm going to play with that more down the road. The problem is right now is there's a API that's in transition with OwnCloud where a lot of the applications require OwnCloud 4.5. For note syncing. Uh, okay. Current okay. version of OwnCloud is version 5. Right. They're still supporting 4.5, but it's end of road, right? It's right. end of life. And I didn't want to I didn't want to sort of get myself locked into a workflow no, with something no, that requires no, no. That, that would be a mess. Yeah. yeah. So I'm waiting for OwnCloud 5's uh, note-taking API to stabilize, or at least for applications to be made around that. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to look into see if I can tie one of these into that. And whichever one really pulls that off, Right. I think that's going to be the final Well, solution. I think that does two things for you. Not only is it get it up to date where it needs to be, but it also shows that there's going to be enough interest to where you're going to get 5.5 and 6.0, yeah. you know, so yeah. on and so forth. Yep. So. There you go, Matt. Yes. That's the Linux Action Show's two picks for great note-taking on Linux. And that brings us to the end of this week's broadcast. Hey, Matt. Yes. Before we get out of here, I wanted to actually give a plug to uh, Field Notes. Yeah. Uh, Coda Radio uh, listener turned me on to Field Notes. You can find them on Amazon. When you're taking notes, sometimes it's nice just to have a small pen right. and an actual piece of paper. Go old you. school. It's Go reliable. This fit, fits in the pocket. Mm -hmm. And the nice thing about writing down your notes is you remember them. Better. That's right, because they actually enter your brain. The process, I, yeah. Learned, yeah, I learned that in Something school. Something about even more so than typing it out. Oh, no, yeah, it's a di yeah. distinctive difference. So uh, I just wanted to give a mention that uh, Field Notes has worked pretty good for me, and uh, you can see here that's pretty good. So it's not too big. About no, it's, fits it, in the hand. it fits right into yeah. a front pocket or, you know. There you go. See? Yeah. Right in the front pocket. That's so, right. Uh, I, I meant to mention that during the notes segment, but uh, there you it's go. okay. All right, so uh, first piece of feedback comes from Riley, and uh, he's in the chat room right now. <laughs> 
And uh, he says, uh, hey, okay, so after hearing Chris rant about his desktops and seeing how crashy his KDE setup was, I decided to share my Arch XFCE setup cool. and show how beautiful it can be. Beautiful, huh? Yeah, I don't know if I would say my desktop is being now, I'm, I'm, I'm on board with your desktop, so you've got a fan here. So let's... Although we did just spend a few minutes during the yeah, segment. Yeah, see, I think what he's got going on here actually looks really good. This is XFCE. Yeah. That looks it really looks really good. Yeah. yeah. I so, mean, I would run the hell out of that. Riley's got a video that we'll link to in the show notes. If you're kind of, it, honestly, to me, it looks like KDE. Yeah, I mean, whatever theme you're doing, uh, let me know, because I've got XFC going on, and I wouldn't mind checking that out. Uh, I ha my desktop has not really been crashy so much as um, I've had some problems with sound inputs, and then yeah. we had K-Runner crash on me during the segment break for some reason. <laughs> but not crashy. No, but it's not crashy. <laughs> it's not crashy. It's not. It's not. It just... XFC. It, it, has, it has its days, okay? There's, uh -huh. there's a lot of moving parts in my desktop. Uh, but thank you to Riley for sending that in, you guys. That's, it's a good-looking desktop, really is. He's using no menu. No menu. Gnome menu. Gno menu. Okay. Yeah. Gno. Uh, all right. So thanks, Riley. So Spazzy C writes, and he says, Matt, hit it on the head. He says, hi, guys. Great show on the 8th. That's last week. This is just a comment or rand, whatever you want to say, on uh, what Matt said about casual gamers only gaming on Windows because it's where the titles are. It's true, at least for me. Yeah. I'm a Windows sysadmin by trade, but I got there because back in 1998... When I got really interested in computer gaming, there was no big titles for Linux. Right. I used Windows 98 and wanted to make sure that the games ran smoothly, so I learned about the OS and built networking to support that habit. Way back mm. then, I did buy a retail copy of Mandrake. It was good and worked well on my system, but it didn't fill my gaming needs. Right. Now, after forcing myself to use Windows 8 at home for evaluating purposes for four months and watching your <laughs> evolving state of gaming on Linux pieces, yeah. I thought it was time to try again. I spent a week where every night... I would wipe my PC and install a distro from scratch and then evaluate how well it worked for me, my expectations, and my games. I've stabilized on OpenSUSE 12.3 for the moment, and I'm enjoying it. Steam installed perfectly, both native client and the one from Crossfire. And I've purchased enough hum Humble Bundles to give me a good selection of games. And Stowe Welk's Stowe, Star Trek Online, works well enough for me to be satisfied. Mm -hmm. I'm working on setting up a free NAS box now, and I'll replace Windows on the rest of my home network as I go. Keep up the insightful work. Spazzy C. Nice stuff. And if you guys are looking for uh, easy, no-frills desktops that run Steam really well, uh, any of the Ubuntu distros, Ubuntu specifically, of course, and Manjaro uh, will uh, come with yeah. Steam pre-installed. So you're kind of done. Yeah, I, I think that Steam working on uh, on the different distros has really turned out a lot better yeah. than I expected. It's really not been a problem at all. Well, I think the community really came together to make sure that was a priority. Yes, sir. Yes, yes. sir. Dev Null writes in. He says, Hi, Chris and Matt. I personally love Linux and open source. The only thing keeping Linux back these days is we don't allow a proprietary code. Hmm. I think we need to be based on the GPL and open code, but we need to allow closed source mainly games for Linux to spread on the desktop. Linux has made a lot more progress than Windows. Uh, Linux has made a lot more progress than Windows apart from the app being written for the Windows platforms. There we go. There are no reasons it couldn't be written for Linux. We just need to permit closed source in certain circumstances. Well, I think th that's happening, a, right? Yeah, I mean, there's a common misnomer that you we don't have any proprietary code in in a Linux experience, and most popular distributions have proprietary code all over the place. It may be layered in such a way that it's still, you know, compatible with licensing, but it's there. People are running restricted codecs. People are running restricted uh, drivers. video drivers. Uh, people are using NDIS wrapper for video or for uh, wireless drivers. Ugh. So there's a which I don't do anymore. Ugh. I buy compatible dongles myself. That's just hey oh, um, or just run Intel. What about dongles? Dongles, danglers. Anyway, so you know, but at the end of the day, um, I think that's already happening. I think really what you're getting at is the commonality is that people they have like a de facto desktop environment situation libraries things that they can really kind of rely on, and I think we're beginning to center around that. It's just going to take a Yeah, I mean, time. I think right now we've got better open source games and better closed source games we than we've ever had. It's just kind of going that way. Well, I think just proprietary alone, I think Steam's proving that it's happening, mm -hmm. really. Uh, I mean, all right. I go strictly that way. I found yeah. this crazy video on the subreddit, man. Okay. I wanted to share it with okay. you. Okay. Oh, In a world where YouTube software reviews suck beyond comprehension, one man stands up for the Linux user base. Matt Hartley co-host of the world-famous Linux Action Show, wants to review ZoneMinder for his audience. Unfortunately, he can't do it alone. Matt needs your help. Are you up to the challenge? Wow, that's pretty dramatic. Well, and you can't have a wish list unless it explodes at the end. That's, that's a really good important. explosion. Yeah, that's a good <laughs> explosion. A little green screen there. You got some skills, Matt. You got some, you got some skills. Did you edit all that together? Oh, yeah. yeah, I did. I'm going to have to hire I, you as the I, 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 did, I did outsource the, uh, the voiceover. Um, the voiceover. But yeah. yeah. So, uh, the, uh, so the, I think the ZoneMinder review is going to happen, right? It is going to happen. We uh, now had, uh, we had an awesome person uh, from the subreddit, uh, Adrian, I believe, and uh, did 
did me a solid and purchased the the necessary IP cam to bring me to to a total of two now. That's awesome. Which is awesome. And I seem to remember you said you said you said I do have one. Something might be compatible. Yeah. yeah, that'd be great. I, I think it, I don't know if it's a I don't know if it's this model, but it's got it, like, it can even be generic. Foster, it's got it's it got matter. wireless and it's got night vision and I bet it'll work. Yeah, any IP cam will work with it. So I mean, generally speaking, so that's awesome. So we could have two to three IP cams working flawlessly for a zone minder review, which cool. I'm looking forward to. Cool. Yeah, and you know, coming up, speaking of things that are coming up on the show, yes. um, old popular topic here on the Linux yes, Action yes, yes. Show is firewalls. Oh, yeah. And I want to dig back into PFSense a little oh, bit. Oh, really? I got some okay. things I want to tear into. Yeah. I set up a PFSense box here at my house, and I uh, want to review some of the advantages to that. And, and share your experiences, like how that's working yep, for you, right? Yep, yep. Yeah, I think it's, it's, uh, it's going to be interesting. And then also we've got... It's sort of percolating because I'm 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 really trying to think through all of it. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. Is uh, a a whole email replacement at home oh, building? That would be great. It's yeah. it's all about fortress land for me these days. That's, right. It starts with the PFSense firewall, yeah. then bringing in my chat server, mm -hmm. bringing in my BitTorrent sync, so I'm not syncing with cloud services. Um, you know, now bringing in my notes. All, I'm, I'm, everything's coming back home. I'm, I'm, Your walls are up. Your I'm not freaking out planted. about the cloud. You just want to bring everything home. You know, yeah. I'm still going to use cloud stuff. Mm -hmm. But as far as long-term archival of important data to me, right. I'm just going to keep it local. Keep it on the LAN. It starts at PFSense, then it goes on to things like email and sure, backup and sure. all that stuff. Makes sense. So the email is still being worked on as well, and we're going to have a segment on that soon. Ooh. Of course, it just kind of depends on when I actually mm -hmm. get an email server mm -hmm. set up. But I just want to remind everybody that we, are, uh, we do have a call for people to put their insights into the Linux Action Show wiki. Yeah. If you go to linuxactionshow.reddit.com, click on the wiki tab, We've got a page where we're trying oh, to put it's together. Really up. Yeah, that's great. Isn't that good looking job, good? guys? Good I know. Job. I know. I know. I know. It's looking really good. Wow. And uh, there's still uh, there's still time to put more stuff in there. Mm -hmm. We're going to create a great resource for the Linux community who also wants to do this. Listen, the best nice. tools to do this job are on Linux. Mm -hmm. So let's take advantage of that and let's help evangelize Linux by really one of the best things to do is solve problems for people. Our community is going to set the shining example. I think so. I think, you know, I, think I want this to be something that like people are like, okay, I'm going to learn how to do Linux I'm going because I need to set this up. And a lot of times, at least for me, what really finally got me to take the plunge was I had a problem I had to solve. Right? Yes. Oh, yeah. I, I, had, to, I had to fix mm -hmm. something. Exactly. And, 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 then, and then it's like, okay, well, what do I got to figure out between the need and the solution to exactly. make the solution happen? And you blaze that trail. And I think what one of the things that this show has happened a lot is when people set out on one of those quests, mm -hmm. they come across our show on a topic that we've covered. Easy to do. Yeah. yeah, right? I mean, that's kind of... Especially when you're looking at video tutorials or just various help. That's yeah. kind of the idea. Yeah, right. So <laughs> then, so this show will be the, one of their stops along that journey. Mm -hmm. This wiki will be on that path now as well. And then they'll watch this show. And this show, that, you know, it could be an episode from three or four years ago, but this wiki will still be standing. This wiki will still be updated. This wiki will still be current. Yes. So it'll still be a good resource. And so that allows us to create a show about building your own email server, but then also keeping this component that remains current as the show continues. Right. So I, I'm really excited about the potential here. And it's a topic that I'm thinking a lot about these days. So oh, clearly we'll people are passionate about it. We've yeah. got great contributors. We're still getting lots of emails about it, That's too. That's awesome. So you can find that at linuxactionshow.reddit.com if you'd like to contribute. If you've rolled a few mail servers or been thinking about it, been looking at projects and uh, tried a few things out, we'd love to get uh, your input mm -hmm. over there. So thanks, you guys. And thanks to everybody who's been over there working on it. You guys are awesome. Oh, epic, guys. Epic. Q yeah, I know Q5 has just been there. He's just so cool. He's been going to town. Yep. All right. So the Linux Action Show is live on Sundays at 10 a.m. Pacific over at jblive.tv and yes. jblive.info. Now, this week, it's not, but no, no. normally it is. Normally it would be. And yeah. uh, that is 1 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. UTC. And we'd love to have you join us live because you can hang out in our chat room and uh, tell us about us being cray-cray. And when in doubt, check the calendar. Yeah. If something and gonna, changes, you'll know. And Mr. Mango in the chat room has got some Steam codes burning a hole in his pocket, so we're going to do some Steam giveaways on the live stream after the show's all done. Mr. Mango is good, awesome people. So that's another reason to tune in live because we do things like that, too. That's right. There's more show. Uh, Matt, where should people find you throughout the week? Uh, as always, you can find me at uh, Facebook. Slash public? Matt, Matt Hartley, Hartley public, public, rather. You got to get that down. I got to get that down. You think <laughs> I, I got to do another shortened URL? You know what it is? It's oh, your brain. It's my brain. It's cognizant. It's co what is it called? Cognitive dissonance, where your brain doesn't want to accept that you're promoting Facebook. <laughs> clearly, clearly. You're that's also it. on the Twitters. I'm on the Twitters. Matt and, Matt uh, you know, if you guys still want to check out the, uh, the wish list, it's still going. Uh, Matt Hartley slash birthday. Matt Hartley dot com. Matt com slash birthday. God, mm -hmm. I cannot get mm -hmm. dot com. It's a dot com thing. Well, that's what it is. Probably because you didn't get that dot com I, for a dollar ninety nine. That's right. Right. Show one ninety nine. 
I um, gotta get up on that. Just a quick uh, reminder: we just updated our browser extensions. Yes. They might need to be reauthorized mm -hmm. in your browser. That helps tag your shopping session to Good support our network. Those. And one other last bit of news: network news before we roll. Yeah. Second episode of BSD now Woo! hit the internet yesterday. Wrong. Engineering and powder kegs. Chris Moore, creator of PCBSD, and Alan Jude from TechSnap and Scale Engine, and many other places. Good stuff. Sat down and talked with a free BSD release engineer. Ooh. Uh, they did yeah. a they did a tutorial about building your own package repository. Covered some up and coming conferences as well as the BSD news. So BSD now episode two is out. You can find it over at JupiterBroadcasting.com. Great. If you're curious about what our BSD cousins have been yes. up to. Great place to find Good out. Good show. Check it out. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in this week's episode of the Linux Action Show. We'll see you right back here next week. <laughs> Coming up on this week's episode of the Linux Action Show, we're going to tell you how to try to take good notes with Linux. There's a lot of different ways to skin that cat. That's not. Is that how, skin that cat? No, is I that racist? I There's a time and place. If you had Astro the talking dog, it would be, I want to eat. I want to eat. Treat, 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 cookie, cookie, Hey, is that cookie, bacon? Cookie, cookie. Hey, is that the bacon? <laughs> I don't mean to put words in dog's mouth. And I like dogs. I've had dogs for a long time. But I honestly sometimes get the sense that dogs are racist. You seem pretty excited about that monkey I was suit. pretty excited. Although, <laughs> although I got some looks when I was outside. <laughs> uh, well, a couple of people brought up suggestions. Uh, my wife suggested I go get the mail. <laughs> Because we have, we have uh, I think you guys have the same type of situation where you got the lock of the mailboxes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I get the, yeah, so well everybody, gonna, everybody can see you walking. Get tonight. my Saturday Night Live music walking, you know. You know, I decided I decided against that because I didn't want little kids all bugging me. Oh, man. So how out. long did you wear it? Oh, well, I think I took it off this morning. Oh, my God. <laughs> no, 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 no.